Hello, welcome to Mzansi Oz Diary. If you're new here, you're very much welcome. So we're going to continue about these tech shops, puzzle shop saga that's continuing in South Africa. In my last video, I was talking about how the the 21 guys that was given to this puzzle shop owner to register this puzzle shop was a little bit uh, long and too too long in my view because of the number of kids that are dying in South Africa already and I had some concern that I raised in that video about the actual merits of that conversation from the president of South Africa Cyril Ramaphosa and the, the, the general about the circumstances that has led to the kids death and the assumption that a lot of them have made about uh, that they're dying because of the contamination within the spaza shops, um, which um, in most likely could be true. It could be true they are. But there are also another issues around the failure to them to actually explore that who is actually manufacturing these products, who is, bringing, who is manufacturing them, we don't know. Uh, who is actually importing them, why they're importing them, where they're importing them, we don't know. That's a bit of a mystery if they are imported. Uh, because this product, as I alluded in the first videos that was really concerning to me, was that when the environmental health practitioner visited these shops, they were showing that this product didn't have any batch number, didn't have any uh, three labelings that we consider a product to be legitimate. That is, your batch number, expiry date, and the uh, manufacturer's detail. So they didn't have this. And that I thought, well, this seems to be counterfeit product for sure. How come they would, chef product would not have this stuff? And they, and I thought, oh, because they don't have all of this information, it's really going to be a mammoth tough task for them to actually find this, the source of this uh, poisoning where, so it's assumed that this uh, poisoning um, of kids in South Africa, uh, poisoned by table force, which is organophosphate, and other kids were poisoned by other carb, which is the cover made. They, the symptoms similar to the organophosphate poisoning. So the other carb, which is the cover made, is a banned uh, agricultural pesticides in South Africa for now 10 years. And the table force itself is actually scheduled. So if it's in the shop, any shops in South Africa, it's, it would be illegal. So police officers should be called and the person be arrested for actually in possession of a table force without a license. So that is how things are in South Africa even to, today. So when the Ramaphosa was talking about this uh, table force and the staff, it seems to me that he didn't understand that actually this is criminality, this is lawlessness to even have this type of products in there, this type of, um, this type of pesticides in this puzzle shop, especially the table force to be seen. And the fact that these uh, foreign nationals in South Africa are actually uh, removing the table force from its original container, which we know it's a no, no, no. Um, <laughs> but they removing them and they keep them in the shops. Obviously, these they, there would be some contamination, which is the assumption a lot of people are making that these deaths as, as a result of that. But I still had a question marks that if we need to really have a very thorough investigation, we need to find where the source of who supplies these goods in the first place because these puzzle shops are outlets. And if the supplier who actually um, manufacture them, how they get into South Africa. So in this video, we're going to look at this video because it's going to give us some insight about these questions that I've been having in my mind and I've been saying it in this channel as soon as I heard that five kids dropped it within half an hour of consuming as snacks. That looks like what? Wait a minute, five kids dropped dead after consuming a snack from this puzzle shop. The snacks that most kids love to buy, this snack, they're very common in South Africa, this snack. Um, that is, yeah, I was really concerned about that. 
But it's, as I said to you, it's 42 kids dead. It's now 43 in total that we know of uh, that have died as a result of being poisoned by these two chemicals, the aldicarb, a carbamate, uh, which is banned in South Africa for 10 years now. The table force, it is scheduled in South Africa as registered and scheduled. It is an organophosphate. So it's not allowed to be in the shop. You would not go into any shops if the law is upheld, if the, the current government understand the law, they implement the law, finding any of these chemicals being sold anywhere, it would be illegal. It would be police would be called and these people would be arrested. But this has not been happening in South Africa. Hence, we're seeing kids dying as, as a result of this failure of governance. All right, so now we're going to listen to this uh, video. Um, this video is uh, giving us some insight about these products, how they get into South Africa. It doesn't answer all the question, but it gives us some a little bit of information that it's missing in this discussion. Okay, let's listen. So KZN police raid Devon, they raided a Devon warehouse. This is a warehouse that is suspected of selling expired foods in KZN. KZN is the biggest port in South Africa, so goods that are coming in in South Africa in most cases it would be um yeah coming through the port of KZN and there are other ports as well like Eastern Cape but KZN is a big one so now let's listen to this video and I think I didn't want to go let's just go to the don't want us to start want to start from here let's listen oh, uh, warehouses here in bluff and i can just ask my colleague as but just to show you some of the items that have been confiscated by police here at this particular warehouse it is said that some of these items are expired goods coming from outside of the country but police have clamped down on this particular warehouse and they now are investigating some of these items um, that they have found now i do have with me the premier of the province uh, as well as um, the police uh, commissioner. I'm going to start with the Premier, as I know he does have a flight to catch. Premier, this is obviously a breaking news coming from a province like KwaZulu-Natal that borders Eswatini and Mozambique. Um, just talk to us about uh, this clamping down on illicit goods. Well, it's disturbing uh, to discover that in our province, uh, such a, a huge warehouse is keeping uh, this, uh, goods from uh, the ships which are expired, some without uh, expiry date, uh, some counterfeit goods uh, that, in fact, in our country, uh, they are not SAP approved. Even, you see, uh, the antibiotics, you see even there are even antibiotics which you don't understand how they are, uh, they are supposed to be here. And also very uh, dangerous substance to the lives of the children, uh, which is mixed with food, uh, the sniper. Uh, which is a pesticide, which is, is very dangerous to the lives of the of, of uh, the, the children. You see, it's a very unfortunate because you just even see the alcohol expired. It's a product which we have never seen in our country. It means a lot of illegal, uh, actually, activities are taking place here. I commend the police, especially uh, under the leadership of uh, uh, Provincial Commissioner Mkwanas in the province of Natal, to be able, in fact, to discover this because we're not going to know that there is such extent of uh, the counterfeit food, expired food, and uh, the things which uh, are not even bearing uh, the, the actually expired date. Now, in KwaZulu-Natal, we've seen several children falling sick. Uh... So they've got a, they've found uh, antibiotics, which are very concerning that one. Antibiotics should not mess around with antibiotics because antibiotics can, misuse of antibiotics can result in a lot of diseases that cannot be treated by antibiotics when it's needed. Uh, antibiotic resistance. So that is concerning, but it's illicit goods. And also the fact that uh, products were mixed with those chemicals that you saw that I've alluded to. That is, um, this is actually, yeah, this is uh, highlighted some of the, not all of it, gives us some insight about what is going on in South Africa. This border management, it is not in, in order. They really need to be trying to really invest some resources around this 
because it is actually showing a lot of holes and, and like the really failure of governance in so many of them. But I'm actually very um, uh, much more uh, trusting and feeling that, yes, I feel much better knowing that this uh, whole thing has been found in KZN because KZN police is really uh, my, it's a most competent police force in South Africa under the leadership of Mkwanazi is just amazing. So I think we will be able to get some answers very soon about this. That's the only thing, the comfort that I get from this is that it's in KZN under the leadership of Mkwanazi who would be able to know the answer what is the hell is going on here. But the fact that it, what is more important to you is the fun product with no label. No label. That is a very concerning and that is also why that we saw in some of these passage of the environmental health were alluding of some product not labeled correctly for what you would expect the expiry date to be. You, for example, meat being labeled as expiring next year, uh, you know, things like uh, chubbing. Ex so the labeling is not up to, they don't know because they, they get this product, counterfeit products uh, that are, are being imported somewhere without any proper labeling and they put the label themselves so the products that are not labeled that are shelf they're not um then these are not a product to be sold by anyone because you don't know where is when how because that would tell as a any person that should actually ring alarm bell and say this product are not a good product they are not a good product and therefore should not be sold to anyone because they do not have the correct labeling from the from the manufacturer. Because the manufacturers, if the manufacturer is a legitimate manufacturer, when they make this product, they would know what is the expiry date because they'll have to do certain tests to determine the the rate at which this product degrades under which condition if stored under which condition temperature 25 degrees yada yada in the lab and then from there calculate the expiry date of that product and have the product when it's released with the correct expiry date and a batch number that links the data this stuff into that batch number so that when there is actually food contamination that batch number and the manufacturer's detail should be able to go to their files and look at it the data that they've you know done to check the product quality and standards of the product so that is the reason why I wanted you guys to listen to this video and just see the extent of this and that the 21 days is not going to solve the problem. The problem stems from here, right here in this video. That's where the problem stems from. Yes, there could be some communication. Um, some contamination within this puzzle shop itself. I'm not saying that it's, um, just, I'm not dismissing that. And there's some clear evidence that it could be, but also I'm saying that there is also some evidence that these product could also be contaminated from the source as well. We should actually explore that because it's not it's not complete investigation. If you haven't gone to the source, the person, the, the manufacturer, if you haven't found the source, the manufacturer, you haven't completed an investigation of any food poisoning, whether poisoning by bacteria or poisoning, adulterous poisoning, which is this one that we're dealing with right now. So let's listen to this video. Um, to some of these illicit goods found in Spaza shops. And we do know that your uh, cabinet, um, especially the transport uh, department, MEC Siboniso Duma, visited the borders just this week looking at some of, um, you know, counterfeit goods at Spaza shops and also tightening our borders. Uh, talk to us more about that initiative as well as we clamp down on some of these goods coming into the country. Well, there, there is a need of enhancing the way that is done in the borders. 
uh, so that we are able uh, to identify the, this at the entry and the entry point in our province. Hence, I was commending the police, uh, the South African police services, because we are not going to see this. It had to go until it uh, reached the people who are the consumers. But because of the police uh, tightening up all the security measures, that is why we got it on the entry point. Uh, but we, we, it's unfortunate that uh, some of the goods might have already uh, entered uh, into other uh, inlands of uh, our uh, province. And it's important that we enhance uh, the management of the borders uh, as, as a country uh, at large, so that we are able, in fact, to prevent uh, the counterfeit goods, dangerous substances uh, to enter, and the cheap a product that will be competing with the locals here in our country. It's important that we just arrest it while uh, it's trying to, uh, to enter uh, our uh, province. Thank you so much, Premier. That was Tamin Tuli, just giving us some background of these illicit goods. I just want to also rope in the Provincial Commissioner, Saps Commissioner, Ntlantlam Konazi. Thank you so much for joining us. PC, if you could just give us some more information about uh, who owns this warehouse. Do we know where these goods came from? Um, and also, I know this has been an ongoing operation from police to try and clamp down on illicit goods without giving too much information away. How did you manage to find out about this warehouse? Yeah, well, I must compliment the, the work of our men and women in blue because through their intelligence profiling of goods that are coming to the country, so they were able to, to come to this warehouse. Uh, the name of the, the owner of the house, I cannot disclose it because it, it's going to be part of the investigation. But I must, I must indicate that, as you can see, the sheer size of this place. Um, there is not only one shipping company that uses this place. There's different shipping companies that will be using this place uh, or the importers that are going to be using this warehouse to store their goods before they are transported to anywhere else uh, where they need to. We know that Devon is a gateway for, for goods, mostly uh, cargo that comes into the country and for the rest of the SADC. Um, what, we, what we have here uh, are items that the members, as we have seen, this sketch of, of illnesses happening in the, in the, in the townships in the main, where we started conduct, uh, conducting a lot of inspections. And, and part of the inspection uh, that will have led us in, into, into such uh, places like this one. And we discover what we've discovered here. Most of these uh, products over here are expired goods. Uh, PC, talk to us about what are we finding um, that has been expired and what is, what is, what is making its way out into spaza shops? How, what is the shelf life of some of these items, if you can just tell us? Yeah, well, we can only believe with what we see written. Mm -hmm. uh, but the real content inside as to whether it's, it's still good for human consumption or not, we can't tell. But our uh, health uh, uh, colleagues uh, were here and they took some simple so, samples so they can be able to test. So what might be written in a plastic bag does not necessarily uh, reflect the real truth. Mm -hmm. Because to start, all these... Pro yes. So, yes. Yep, what is written may not reflect the real truth. So they, yeah, oh gosh. Oh. It's because uh, each product that is released must have the batch number, expiry date, manufacturer's details. Um, so they, they, you know, that is how it works. And yeah, this is a very, concerning to me if you're south african you really should be really concerned about this products are not certified in south africa by the south african authorities to be sold that's where the problem starts uh, we have sweets uh, from different manufacturers that you see here we've got chips uh, spices that are you know the famous you see all of that the sweets and all of this stuff and the stuff that kids eat in south africa the, this famous spice uh, it's one that you find commonly in the township on those chips that the children are eating. Mm. Uh, we always all believe that those chips are manufactured, made by a South African company. But here we are. We see the spice that is used in those chips. Which yep. So they're not manufactured in South Africa. Those chips. Yep. As a spices. So obviously they use these spices, but this spice itself has not been manufactured correctly because it doesn't have expiry date, doesn't have manufacturer's detail, doesn't have, uh, you know, the batch number. So you're putting something like that into the chips. So 
I will really show about where this thing is coming from. And you can see even with the box of these snappers, you see their warning sign there? You know, the, the label, this label here, see that? It just tells you that this product, yeah, it's a, it tells you this is a dangerous chemical. Yeah? But it's stored inside, you get this stuff that are consumed by the chips and everything that are consumed by kids in South Africa. They, they're going to end up in the spaza shops, in the spaza shops. You won't find this in in Woolworths, South Africa or Checkers. You find them in this foreign-owned puzzle shops. That's where they end up in the foreign-owned puzzle shop in South Africa. Which means there's someone else that makes these chips and put the spice on and sell it to the children. But now the very same spice comes in the same container way with chemical uh, um, uh, things like this, as, we, as the team was talking about, which is dangerous items. You mix them together. This you eat, this you don't eat. But when, when the product that you eat ends up in your stomach, there would be some, some, some uh, 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 items or particles that came from this that will infect that. So it will be contaminated. But because there's no control in terms of what must be done, uh, it, it ends up in the streets. So it differs, like I'm saying, from lotion, which people use, whitening creams for the ladies out there most of the time, uh, alcohol for people to entertain themselves, sardines, what you can see here, spices, baby food, uh, medication, uh, uh, you know, medication that are not even supposed to be here because, I mean, antibiotics, how do you get them in place like this? Thank you so much for talking to us. Well, but that was Ntlantlam Konazi, the Provincial Commissioner of uh, SAPS here in KwaZulu-Natal, Unati. Yeah, ampicillin, antibiotic. Thank you. Just talking to us about some of these expired goods that have been found in this particular warehouse. If you can just walk with me before I hand back to you. It's quite a big uh, warehouse. And as you heard the PC saying there that this particular warehouse is um, also shared with other shipping companies. They are investigating to see where exactly some of these goods were dispatched to and also where they are coming from. So... As you have seen that snipers, that sniper is organophosphate. So it is uh, the chemical name for it is the dichlorovinyl dimethane phosphate, diclophos. It is, it, is, it is known as diclophos. So this one, even with inhaling it, it would actually kill a person or animal, an 80 kilogram person inhaling, just inhaling it at diclophos, it's organophosphate, um, and it already has that symbol that shows you that these are very dangerous chemicals, but it starts with food. So are we really sure that these, uh, you know, contamination, it is really in the shops, or is there contamination from the supplier itself from these where these foreign national imported goods is the contamination that's a question i'm not it's a question because so far nobody has given that answer for sure and now we can see now the evidence of it some of it how can you have food stored with that with the organophosphate diclophos snipers that's it you know sniper is the brand name but it's actually the chemical is diclophos that's a diclophos that you find in there. That's a chemical. That's two, two, two dichlorophor, dichlorovinyl, dichlorovinyl dimethane phosphate. Two slash two dichlorovinyl dimethyl phosphate. That's, that's why we have two two. Di, di, two of those in there, in the comma. So in short, it's dichlorophos. It's a granophosphate, deadly. A micro, 0 0.1 micro would actually be deadly for an 80 kilogram um, person. Just imagine a child. It's even with inhaling it, you know, so can inhaling or ingesting it can be deadly for both. Um, so the question still remain, is this contamination only at puzzle shop or is it con contamination happens from the source? from either they 
manufacture where it's getting made and where we stored now we saw that in that warehouse the storage of it how it came into south africa they were all the stuff they were going to use for food drinks antibiotic were all in the same box of that diclofos um okay and why you even have antibiotic there lawlessness who is responsible for this the government yeah, the government is the one. The government is the one that needs to enforce the law. The government is the one that has been caught slipping, as always. Now they're running around with 21-day registration. Do you think 21-day, if all of them get registered, will actually sort this problem? How many of you think this will sort the problem for register and get them registered? Think there was this problem, as you've seen now with this warehouse? It's not going to go away, isn't it? Yeah, it's not going to go away because we haven't found the source. We haven't found the source. Even if they're registering, they're still going to have these expired goods. They're still going to be relabeling them. So I would actually put to to all of you that I would allege that all of the goods that you buy from this puzzle shop, all of them are, have expired and they've been relabeled to uh, make to sort of fool all of some of you because some of you I can see that you can see that you know what expected for labeling but some of you some of the people would be fooled about the expiry date that they put in there in this product that you would think that they still in in they still are you know they still can be consumed because they've been relabeled because you've heard from that from this video that this product came in imported elsewhere with no expiry date. So they waiting for this Pasa shop owner, foreign nationals to actually put label on them. And that's why you've been finding environmental health have been going there and finding this product with very uh, odd labeling that doesn't really make sense for the product, uh, for the formulation of the product, why it would have such a labeling that because they don't understand the science. So that's what the crooks do. They're getting caught out. So this source is stems outside if you are importing it elsewhere. And this is reflecting the failure in border management, the failure in biosecurity in allowing these goods into South Africa. That is the responsibility of the government. The government uh, registering this Kaza shop, it is my opinion, that it is not going to stop the the poisoning of South African children. It's not going to stop it because we haven't found the source. It's uh they should have been registered anyway. How can you have a business that you don't you're not registered? How can you run a business without registration? Okay. But registering them it's not going to sort this problem because they're going to order this product from these people. And they're going to relabel them, expired product, and relabeling them as if they still are still suitable for consumption, for public consumption. So the poisoning of South African children is not going to stop because this, as always, the ANC, it just quickly uh, it took them that long to come up with something. And even that, when you look at it, it's still not going to solve the problem because they're not governing they don't think true about the risk they put they've already created with this borderless south africa they haven't thought too with this borderless south africa it is getting people coming into your country and just asking for asylum and then within a few weeks they now have own spaza shop how's that it? how is that explain that to me Okay, within a few weeks, they now have spaza shop. They now have a suppliers. Who has sent them there? And then you can see even with these rates, they you would find one person who is a foreign national has documentation, and then most people that are there are not documented. They have a pending asylum seeker documentation, but they're working in those spaza shops. So I would allege that these people actually are part of the same syndicate. These people who are 
who have come to South Africa and were able, according to the due to this uh, Doji Home Affairs, were able to get these South African identification and documentation, and be legitimized uh, through those doginess of that department, and then they are now uh, creating this. Um, uh, people smuggling ring of their own people from the, where they came from, and then they come in with the same uh, platform, become asylum, and then once you asylum, we're waiting for you to be approved. You can work at my shop, and they keep even with the goods they're bringing in. It's the same, same thing. I can see it from here without any intelligence, just using my, my brain, my analytical brain. <laughs> How can you not see it? How can you not see this? This is so obvious. How can you, as a government, not see with all the power and intelligence that you have, how can you not see this, that you're dealing with people smuggling, that your laws, immigration and everything needs to be fixed? And you cannot just look at one part of and just deportation. It is broader. It's even with the goods and biosecurity that is at risk here. Look at this, this stuff here that we just saw this video. It just tells us that this Ramaphosa's uh, speech was useless. Like I said, spend about how many weeks before he came and spoke to the nation? Kids died and your president doesn't come up and come up six weeks, six weeks later and talk about something that is, doesn't make sense, about the law that you already know that it hasn't been enforced. It's how these people, they're useless. They're useless. I don't know why they're still in TNU. But anyway, we know that the DA is still the same in the same pot anyway because we heard from John. Finally, he was smoked out from where he was, just like Ramaphosa. Here's John. Finally, he was smoked out. Smoked him out. We did smoke him out. He finally showed up. Let's hear. Africa, for the manufacture and distribution of it, only five of those are active. Um, the, they are all under strict uh, supervision and strict licensing obligations and strict supply chain management conditions. The Department of Agriculture has inspectors in each of the nine provinces that conduct inspections on the supply chain from uh, shops that, and agricultural co-ops that are authorized to sell it to make sure that it is being, uh, being properly uh, sold and distributed to the right people. It is what's classified in the agricultural sectors, an RUP, a restricted use product. Turbifos is a highly effective um, agricultural uh, pesticide. It's used extensively in South Africa in the citrus, in the maize, and in the potato industry. Uh, and it's precisely because it is so effective that you've seen an abuse of it now being utilized at a, um, at a residential or uh, civilian use. I want to stress this product is not meant to be utilized by people who are not licensed, certified, or authorized to be able to use it. It is strictly for agricultural practitioners, and it should not be utilized in any way, shape, or form by any private citizen for any use um, other than the authorized agricultural use. Um, we'll obviously engaging with the variety of, uh, of the manufacturers, the five of them. We're also working closely with CropLife, uh, who have been conducting independent laboratory tests on the samples that were found during the raids on the variety of, of Spaza shops. It is my view and my opinion, and I imagine it will be confirmed um, shortly, that the turbifos that has been found in the South African Spaza shop situation, as well as in some of the other shops, does not emanate from uh, local manufacturers. If one looks at the... Uh, at the uh, pictures of what has been found in the spaza shops, it differs quite significantly from the color and, and uh, texture of locally produced turbifos. What also heightens the, uh, the suspicion that this is turbifos that's coming in from a neighboring country, and that is yet to be determined which one or ones, is that in many instances it's been found with aldicarb. Um, those are the straws that were found, you may have seen in the uh, in, in a variety of the pictures. Aldicarb was banned in South Africa for production or distribution in 2016. So the fact that, car that Aldicarb is now being found together with the Turbifos in these inspections is a very clear indication that there is a high likelihood 
that the turbifos that's being found in these instances is coming from external sources to South Africa. Obviously, that remains to be uh, clarified by the independent laboratory test, but I imagine those should be out shortly and will be able to give us a further direction. This then begs the, the question about how we improve biosecurity in South Africa. Biosecurity in South Africa to date has not been treated as a major priority, and if one looks at other countries around the world, they take biosecurity very, very seriously. They do not allow products, organic materials, and other uh, materials to come through their ports of entry, whether it's fruit and, and meat coming through airports and other ports of entry, or whether it's import of chemicals and other matters. And that is why the, one of the key action steps that's outlined in the document that has been shared with all of you today is the reinstatement of the Biosecurity Hub, which will bring together in a multi-agency approach the Border Management Authority, the SAPS, the uh, SANDF, as well as the Departments of Agriculture, Health, and other relevant departments, so that we can start to improve biosecurity across South Africa, not only at a farm gate level, but also across the country. Biosecurity has to become everybody's responsibility in South Africa. Lapses in biosecurity, as we've seen, and the inability to deal with some of the biosecurity concerns have caused significant harm to our economy, foot and mouth outbreaks, uh, citrus, uh, black spot, and other issues uh, significantly impair our ability to be able to sell agricultural goods into other markets around the world. And so biosecurity is something which has been declared now a major priority of the Department of Agriculture. It is one of the seven key priorities that we've identified in our annual performance plan, and we hope to enlist the support of all South Africans as we make biosecurity everybody's responsibility. Of course, as the independent laboratory results come out, the Department of Agriculture will endeavour to keep uh, the media, as well as South Africa, informed. Thank you very much. So, as you've heard from John, we smoked him out from where he was, finally showed up. Uh, as I told you before in my last video, DA is, I don't know why we should, why we're calling DA in opposition. So his main concern with this is that the biosecurity, the risk is that it reduced the sale of uh, certain goods, uh, agricultural goods to other, other markets, which is true. But it also, this is the situation right now that's very in the minds of every South Africans is that the death of the kids. I mean, he got he comes out, been smoked out where he was, and he doesn't even acknowledge the death of these kids as a result of table force at least he could at least acknowledge that so his really main concern here is the business side of it like i said da they only advocate for a small group which is the business how can you be in opposition just for business you don't even have a sympathy to see that people are dying kids are dying in your country and you want to govern that country you know how so see why they would never, in my view, unless there's something changes in how they govern themselves, this uh, party, that South Africans are not going to consider the alternative government. So therefore, they're going to look at other, there's other 40% of other parties that they voted for. And my my thing is, for you South Africans, you need to think about centre-right. Like I said, there are three parties that I'll, I'll have a look and see other parties. But Action SA by Herman Mashaba, Gaten McKenzie, PA, and uh, the other one for VUO is uh, what I spoke about yesterday, uh, Africa Transformation Movement, that one as well. It is also very, uh, ATM is also a centre-right. So these are the party so far that I've identified. But I will look at others as well because I think there's there's a lot. We saw that in the election there was a huge, huge number of them there. So if you've got so many of them that, that way, it's going to be harder for government to govern. So we need to be strategic here. I think most centre-right party, like those three, can... I think they would be able to be governing very well because there's a lot of things that are similar in all of them around border management, border security, national security, business, 
and just local government management and making sure patriotic about South Africa and things, how things like run locally level in South Africa. So they would actually be very good for uh, as an alternative government and a DA. Because you just even listen to that speech. Yeah, it's great that you said that, John, but it's how long now? And also you're Minister of Agriculture and you haven't even acknowledged his death. So this is just like, it's a speech that probably not a good idea to say it now, the speech, because it's the first time we had someone from DA to say anything related to this death that has to do with a key portfolio that the Minister of Agriculture is in it table force that's used in agriculture so you would think as a minister you'd be very concerned and you would come out as soon as you had a medical examiner say these kids died as a result of table force you would actually straight away ensure and assure the, the public that this is not you don't think it's from uh, the in South African produced table force and yeah so it is actually concerning but it's what i expected anyway from da there's nothing new we all, we know them isn't it Mzansi? we know these people so what is the measure that the da minister put in place that actually would mitigate and reduce this i mean the only concern that you all should have that this government is actually moving at snail scale even with the important legislation this white paper of immigration is gonna i would i don't think this they will actually have a, a really good amendment of this migration law by the end of this term and you can see that this thing needs to be done asap if they're really working really well this should be done within six weeks and be amended and be stopped because we can see the risk now the risk that criminals have looked at this immigration law and the Bill of Rights and they're abusing it. That's all I'm going to say. This is Simzansi Oz. If you're new here, you're welcome. If you're enjoying the conversation and you like what I'm saying, please consider subscribing and have a lovely day. See ya.